Welcome again to a second part of what is common sense. And we're going to go into a little bit more specific. Uh, again, before common sense, one of the problems why we have a problem with common sense is because we do not have a shared morality. So here is the questions. How do you know then when something that you do is ethical or illegal but, or unethical but legal or legal but unconstitutional or unconstitutional but legal? And this is the different things that I'm going to share with you because as an attorney, I see a lot of things that are illegal. I also see things that are legal but unconstitutional. And it's very, very interesting, where is the line? And so here is this class where one of the first things I'm going to share with you is, is it illegal to lie to one's family? Um, and of course, the answer is no, it's not illegal, but it is unethical. That's, that's your conscience, that's your value, that's your, you just don't lie to people that you love each other. But I mean, do you lie? Yes, but is it illegal? Are you going to be arrested? Not necessarily. If law reflects society ethical value, does it cost, codify all ethical requirements? If society values ethical values, is there some way, some way, somehow that we have codes of ethics? And of course, by 1990, 90% of the companies had code of ethics, not before. And in your textbook, you're going to see that the first company that had a code of ethics was Johnson & Johnson in New Jersey. I don't know about the other state. And that is expectation of behavior. You know, how do we want you to behave in this company? We're going to have a code of ethics. We're going to have a code of ethics, not your ethics, not mine ethics. This is the company as an individual, as an entity under the Constitution wants to have a certain behavior. They want to represent a certain way. And that happens all the time. Like uh, by going to sit in law school, there was one philosophy. There was one code of ethics. When I was going to William Patterson College, there was another way of getting things done. They wanted me to behave in a different way. And the thing that's very, very interesting is, in a way, I was behaving the same way in Seton Hall Law School and William Patterson, like I had to sit in chairs like you did. But the method and the manner was really according to the code of ethics of the school, how to behave. For example, at Seton Hall Law School, the professor would be calling on us, and we had to cite cases. He called in the name, and I had to stand up, and I had to cite. William Patterson, I didn't do that. I volunteered to give the information, and if I didn't prepare my lesson, I did not volunteer. I just kept my mouth shut, sometimes even dozing off a little bit so that I can help it. So this is very important. So what is ethics? Because a lot of people ask me, what is value? What is morality? What is ethics? Well, morality is something that you personally believe. It's how you believe inside of you, your conscience, the way you have been raised. Value is what you value. You value family. You value your husband, you value your children, uh, you value your nice car, you value education. Uh, and this is something that within society you have been also raised with, not necessarily individually, but you surround in your env environment, your community. And what is ethics, really, is expectation of behavior. Because ethics is values, and ethics is more in a larger situation. So a company that has 600 people, 1,000 people, 1,000 employees, they have code of ethics because all at once is more diversity, so they set up some kind of code of expectation. So ethics is expectation of behavior. And when I ask the question, what is then business ethics, that is expectation of behavior in business. In law school, we were told what to wear, how to wear. As a woman, I had to wear a suit. I cannot wear a dress because then they think I'm a clerk. I had to stand up in a certain way. I could not speak with my hand because that's not the culture. In Italy, we all speak with hands. I mean, body language is very important. In law school, as a lawyer, I cannot start speaking with hands, even if sometimes I feel like to. But these are the things that code of actors, expectation of behavior. And when you talk about business ethic, then it's some kind of ethical standard to business behavior, how to relate to other people at work. And of course, the traditional view of the old-fashioned way, whenever I ask, you know, what is business ethic, they used to think of obey, 
the law and make profit. And that's traditional. We don't have that anymore. The, the modern view is you have to have a certain behavior to accomplish certain activities in an ethical manner and also be socially responsible. So business really has a bigger responsibility. Not only do they have to make profit or make society better without harming it, they have to do it in a Ill in an ethical manner, and they have to be socially responsible. Because you can make profit by selling illegal drug. That's not something that we're going to accept that. You have to make profit ethically. You have to make profit without hurting somebody else. Like if I make profit because I'm using somebody else's information or somebody else's property, that is making profit in an ethical manner. Or if I'm making profit by using somebody else's body, that, and that's, un again, unethical and it will not be accepted. And here I'm making society better. I mean, if you think about uh, people that have uh, prostitution, I mean, don't they make society better? That's a, s a service. Uh, study shows that uh, men that have, uh, in, in Europe and other countries where it's legal to um, have prostitution, they are more of a family. They don't have a high divorce rate like we have today here because they feel that it's more of a service. Their husband is less pushy, I guess, or whatever you want to call it, but that's why they have le less divorce because they have uh, homes where the husband or the young boy can go over there and be taught how to have sex, and it's, it's okay. We're here in our society. We don't allow that kind of behavior. So the modern view, society has to make profit I mean, society better without harming it in an ethical manner and also be socially responsible. Now, let's talk about ethics. It's for a while put aside law. This is a good situation where how you know ethical reason. Well, ethics is obligation. Um, you have an obligation to care for somebody, uh, you have an obligation to be nice, uh, you have an obligation uh, not to. Uh, uh, say, you know, words that get somebody upset. And some people say is that we are nice to each other, or I like to take care of my mom, or I like to do nice things because of my religion. And how many times you hear people, you know, if you good things and you do good acts, that you're going to go, when you die, you go to heaven. So a lot of times people are ethical. Uh, they will not steal, they will not rob, they will not cheat, they will not lie, even to their family members. They will be very ethical people, they will be faithful husbands or faithful wives because of the religion. They don't want to go to hell, they want to go to heaven. But then not everybody believes that we have a creator, not everybody believes that we have a heaven, that we have a hell. And so there are people that came up with a theory that we are ethical not because of religion. We are ethical not because we have afraid that there is a God that's going to send us to hell. We are ethical because of consequences. We don't like to have done to me what you don't, I don't like to do to you what you don't like to have done to me in that way. So in that, I put the name Kant in your PowerPoint slide because he's the, he's the famous theorist for, that came up with this, consequential. You think of the consequences. I'm not going to do certain things because I don't like other people to do that to me. So if we uh, are driving down the road and we see someone that has a flat tire, uh, I would be ethical to help the person because I like to think that someday when I have a flat tire that I don't know what to do about it, that some nice gentlemen or some nice ladies will come and help me, at least even use the cell phone to call somebody to help me or the tour truck or whatever. So you're doing things because of the consequences and not necessarily because there is a God and you're going to be rewarded after you're dead. And of course, the third one, which is the one that we're leaning today, is outcome-oriented, utilitarian. And this is the one that I'm very much concerned, but this is the one we're leaning, is the greatest good for the greatest number. And I have no problem when I know what is good, because what is good for you might not be good for me. The greatest good for the greatest number. And here we go again, what is the greatest, or who is this greatest number? And you're going to see as time goes on, the greatest number is the reasonable people. Well, who are these reasonable people? Who are these day reasonable people? 
And according to case law, the reasonable people are a group of people that have little disagreement about the same issue. So if we go back to the example that I gave you, illustration about our former President Clinton, the 61% were the reasonable people that believes the President is doing a good job and I don't care what he does in his personal life. So because a group of people have little disagreement about his behavior, they didn't think anything was wrong with it, then that is the reasonable people. So the greatest good for the greatest number, which are the reasonable people. Not 100%, none of this stuff. So we are then also behaving, or we expectation of behavior, because we have rights. We have a right to life, we have a right to liberty, we have a right to property, and we have a right to pursue happiness. Now, let me give you an example. Uh, I was raised in the country, like I said before, so having four sons, I went through a time where they were teenagers, and I'm glad that it's finished that part, and each one had different rocks uh, uh, posters in the room. And I remember this particular one, my number one son, that um, he, he loved um, Kiss. And uh, my mother, now you have to remember, she, is, she has no idea what is this right to life. She doesn't have an idea what's right to liberty. She doesn't know anything about right to privacy, none of this stuff. She just happened to go in one of, my, of his room, and she saw all these kiss posters on the wall, and she just took them out because they were ugly, they were scary, and she felt that he's going to have bad dreams, and I should not be allowed him to have those posters in the room. And while we are talking, here comes my son, and he goes, Mom, why did you rip my posters? And I says, I did not rip your posters. I was never upstairs in your room because I know that that is his room. I would not go in in his room. That is his privacy. That's his only place that he can be who he wants to be without Mom always checking on him. So next thing you know, he's getting all mad. So I'm asking my mom, did you did that? Did you take the posters down? He goes, yeah. She said, that's no good for him to have those posters. They're ugly, so uh, that kind of thing. That music is no good, you know, all that kind of thing. And next thing you know, my son then was yelling at grandma because he said, hey, this is America. This is now Yugoslavia. We don't have the communists over here. And of course, my mom was upset that he talks like that to her. And next thing you know, my mom says to me, who pays for the mortgage? And I says, I do. Therefore, he has no right of privacy. But that's because of our training in a different way. So this is an example where we expect or we, we, uh, we, we appreciate our privacy. We like space. We like 18 inches, according to so sociology that has studies, that we in the United States do not like to stand close to a person. We like to have at least 18 inches between two people. And, and in the study, if you ever get a chance to look at it, it's very interesting because any other country, if you stand and someone comes closer and closer and closer to you, you don't move. Instead, in the United States, when you stand there and somebody was coming closer to the, to the, to the person, he would be moving. And always about 18 inches. I don't know how we know it, but that's what it was. It was at least 18 inches separation. We like our space. We don't want to be close sit together. So these are our rights. So many times we behave because we have right. We want our privacy. We don't be, uh, believe people should ask questions, interfere so with certain things that we don't want people to know and we don't just share anything. Now, the other problem is social responsibility. So here you are a business person or you are just a husband or a brother. You're making money. You're making a good income. You have to make the income in an ethical manner and you also have to be socially responsible. And social responsibility is one of the biggest problems. And that means the greatest good for the greatest number. What does it mean? That the company has to fulfill the social expectation of society at large, how this company should be relating with the person that they're doing business with. So I am doing business with you and you are happy with the way I do business, but is society at large happy with the way I do business with you? So here is a situation that we have a contractual relationship, and you agree to the method and the manners to do business, but society at large but not like the way we are doing business. So a company not only has to do profit, 
and behave in an ethical manner, but also has to fulfill the social expectation or fulfill the expectation of society at large or the greatest good for the greatest number. Not everybody's good, but what society at large thinks is good business, what society at large thinks is good product, or what society at large thinks is a good way to make profit, and that's very difficult. An act of most reasonable person have little disagreement about themselves. This is exactly what social responsibility means. Do we have a shared morality in our society? No, we don't. And this is why we, we are depending or we making decision on polls, the reasonable people, because we don't have a share, we don't have common sense. So we put the question so many times, even when you watch the news, they ask you a question. How do you think, you know, do you want this or do you want, please p p take your vote in and then we're gonna give you the result after this, this show. We believe in surveys because we wanna know what is good, because we don't know what is good, and then what is good for the greatest number. And of course, who's this greatest number? the group of people that have little disagreement of what is good. And business has to learn that. Fairness, I think I mentioned that in before, and it's gonna hear over and over again. What is justice? Justice is not law. Can you have justice without law? No. Can you have law without justice? Yes. And again, fairness, which means different things to different people, depends on the economics and the value. Do we have perfect information today? Absolutely not. As a matter of fact, at the present time, we have issue about the CIA giving our president incorrect information. And we're trying to find out who was the person. And we're not going to be able to find out because n nobody is that one person that gives the information. There's a lot of people working together. There's a lot of people reviewing his speech. There's a lot of people, they might be overlooking a word. And sometimes the ball just start rolling like a snowball, and next thing you know, it starts with a little pebble and it becomes a big ball. And this is where we have to be very careful because we make decision on information. In a technological time, we make decision on information. What is good for the greatest number of society? But if we have incorrect information, we're gonna make wrong decision. And then, that decision is going to be wrong because society at large does not agree with that information. Very, very interesting. How she will then a business person ought to behave? Here's a trick. How shall? That is law. Ought to behave? That is ethics. And of course, I love this thing that I read one time, and I personally, I see it over and over again. I see it with my kids, and I see it in business, and I see it as a lawyer. Usually, we like a behavior and we desire that behavior. So next thing you know, you desire your boyfriend to bring you flowers. And it's a nice behavior. There is no law about that. It's an ethical behavior. And he brings you flowers and that's desire. Then you almost expect it. You know, next thing you know, Valentine's Day comes along or your birthday comes along. Well, last year he got me flower, but this year he didn't get me flower. Right away you think, oh, he loves you less or he doesn't care for you anymore because something that you desire for him to do, now you're expecting it. And if he doesn't do it, you think something was wrong. It's become an expectation of standard behavior. Remember ethics. And then finally it's mandated. So keeping it, we making a law, we making a rule, we making a law that you have to, because if you don't, there's consequences. And I hear this so many times. You know, I hear, I'm expecting this behavior from you. I'm or even going to school. I'm expecting you to get an A. First, you desire to get an A. Then, is expected to get an A from the professor. And then you have to get an A because the company will not reimburse you the money. And you see this over and over again because it's it's nice. We're trying very much to encourage good behavior, but first we have to have the desire of that behavior. And of course, it's always what the greatest number agrees with it. So we're going to have more. Qu we're going to have more questions, and we're going to discuss this question a lot further in our discussion bulletin board. And thank you.
started looking at that thing and it's not as ugly. <laughs> The smoke doesn't come out. Why is this flashing light all the time going on? Not now it's red, but before it's like once in a while it flashes. I think it's just trying to say it's recording or something. I'm okay. not sure. Maybe because it's on or something. 